Hello everyone, this is Susanna, God Crochet and Chatter. Welcome back. Today, we will be going over the book of John. It's going to be a little bit different than usual, but I know that you will enjoy it. I know I certainly did. And we're going to be doing our trivia question. Let's get that done right now so that I do not forget. The last question was, what is the 40th book in the Bible? If you answered Matthew, you got it correctly. Today's question, who taught with Barnabas at Antioch? Who taught with Barnabas at Antioch? Okay. All right, let's get to our overview of the book of the Gospel of John. John wrote not only the Gospel of John, he wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and Revelation. Can you imagine you're pretty much at the end of your life? All your friends have passed on. You might wonder what will your legacy be once you're dead and gone? You very well are remembering your friends, your mother, your sisters, your brothers, acquaintances. Um, you have a lot stored in your memory banks of their lives, where they lived, what they ate, their likes, their dislikes, their frustrations, their great faith, their lack of faith. We remember a lot of things. And sometimes people keep journals to pass on, pass on once they themselves have passed on so that their family can have a remembrance. And they often write on back of pictures, this is great, great grandma Ruth, uh, this is great grandpa George, and so forth and so on. Because we want it to be known that these people lived, they died, and they were human beings, just like we were. And they all had a story to tell. And we too will leave behind a story. What will that story look like? What would you want to be remembered for? All right, let's see what's going on with John at this time in his life. He's an old man, this one who sits on the stool and leans against the wall, eyes closed and face soft. Were it not for his hand stroking his beard, you would think that he was asleep. Some in the room assume he is. He does this often during worship. As the people sing, his eyes will close and his chin will fall until it rests on his chest, and there he will remain motionless, silent. Those who know him well know better. They know he is not resting. He is traveling. Atop the music, he journeys back, back, back until he's young again, strong again, there again. There on the seashore with James and the apostles, there on the trail with the disciples and the women. There in the temple with Cephas and the accusers. It has been 60 years, but John sees him still. The decades took John's strength, but they didn't take his memory. The years dulled his sight, but they didn't dull his vision. The seasons may have wrinkled his face, but they didn't soften his love. He had been with God. God had been with him. How could he forget? The wine that moments before had been water, John could still taste it. The mud placed on the eyes of the blind man in Jerusalem, John could still remember it. The aroma of Mary's perfume as it filled the room, John could still smell it. And the voice, oh, the voice, his voice, John could still hear it. I am the light of the world, it rang. I am the door. I am the way, the truth, the life. I will come back, it promised, and take you to be with me. Those who believe in me, it assured, will have life even if they die. John could hear him. John could see him. Scenes branded on his heart. Words sealed into his soul. John would never forget. How could he? He had been there. He opens his eyes and blinks. The singing has stopped. The teacher has begun. John looks at the listeners and listens to the teacher. If only you could have been there, he thinks. But he wasn't. 
Most weren't. Most weren't even born. And most who were there are dead. Peter is. So is James, Nathaniel, Martha, Philip. They're all gone. Even Paul, the apostle who came late, is dead. Only John remains. He looks again at the church, small, earnest. They lean forward to hear the teacher. John listens to him. What a task. Speaking of one he never saw, explaining words he never heard, John is there if the teacher needs him. But what will happen when John is gone? What will the teacher do then? When John's voice is silent and his tongue is stilled, who will tell them how Jesus silenced the waves? How will they hear how he fed the thousands? Will they remember how he prayed for unity? How will they know if only they could have been there? Suddenly, in his heart, he knows what to do. Later, under the light of a sunlit shaft, the old fisherman unfolds the scrolls and begins to write the story of his life. In the beginning was the word. Isn't that awesome? I can quite imagine that's the thoughts that were going through John's mind. He's at the end of his life. The teacher that is speaking and the students, they didn't see Jesus. They didn't see the other apostles. They didn't see the miracles performed. But they're there, they're learning. And John's thinking, I need to write this down. I want to tell what I witnessed. And John does a great job of it in John 3, 16. The most beloved verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that those who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Isn't that wonderful? Um... So, yeah, our legacy is important. The things that we see, the things that we experience, we need to write it down. We need to tell others. We need to share it. We need to um, hope that we're remembered and our words are remembered. But soon it will fade into oblivion and will no longer be known for, known for future generations. Oh, maybe for a couple of generations. But after that, all the pictures might get lost, all the letters burned. And life goes on. But isn't it wonderful that the writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, wrote down their eyewitness account? These things were real. It's not that hard to believe, is it? To believe in God and the apostles and what they wrote down? Is it really so hard to believe? No, 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 no. It is not. You believe that George Washington lived. You believe when you see archaeological digs of the Bible. You believe in many things that you've never seen but you've read about. And when you study and dig deeper, you find out that they are true. So let's not take the Bible lightly. It is written by the finger of God. All right, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed that devotional today, uh, talking about John a little bit. Um, today, I read from my the Inspirational Bible by Max Ludo, and it really is another great study Bible. If you haven't um, seen this Bible, you may want to check one out. He gives beautiful um, applications um, in the margins. In fact, in the margin, he will do situation, observation, inspiration, application, and exploration. And he'll take a group of scriptures and he'll dissect them. And it's that digging deeper in God's word, isn't it? That's what we need to do. All right, everyone, that's pretty much it for today. I was feeling a little down this morning, but I found a prayer. Uh, it's a prayer for healing. It's a prayer for before surgery, which I will read the day before my surgery. I will come on and do a special little devotion that day. And it really changed my gloomy outlook this morning to one more positive. And I thank God for that. Doesn't he remind us of things that we may have forgotten or are buried underneath our times of stress? Yes, indeed. He is indeed a loving, gracious God. And I love him so much. I did get a, another dishcloth done. I got to do my ends in. This one turned out a little bit more uh, not so curly on the edges. And this is that knoll dishcloth that I talked about. Remember I did this one? See how the edge is curled up? I just did my beginning chain um, too tight. This one, I did bump up the hook a little bit to an H hook. 
this is a G hook. They're, this, the purple one's just a little bit bigger. What do you think? This one here with the G hook or this one here with an H hook? And I like that I did the, the striping colors. It seems like a very nice dishcloth. Um, I, I love cotton dishcloths. I, my, my children, my, my great-grandchildren use them. They use my scrubbies. It's kind of nice when people appreciate what you're crocheting. All right, everyone. This is Suzanne at Got Crochet and Chatter. I'm signing off today. I've got laundry in my dryer I've got to keep an eye on. Today, we're just kind of relaxing. There's a really nip in the air today. I don't want to catch a cold before my surgery. That would be, like, not good. Tomorrow, we go for our yearly physicals. Uh, pray that we have a good report. I think we're going to. There's no reason to believe otherwise. All right, everyone. You take care. Have a most blessed day. I will be back tomorrow, Lord willing, and God crochet and chatter. Bye-bye.